Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison. Most of us probably know a thing or two about the first three presidents, but how much do we really know about Madison? Let's dig in and learn who he was and what happened while he was president. We'll be focusing on the War of 1812, but before we do that, let's do some Madison 101. Here we go. So James Madison was from Virginia, making him a part of what historians call the Virginia Dynasty, along with Washington, Jefferson, and James Monroe. See, the term Virginia Dynasty refers to the fact that four out of the first five presidents were from Virginia. Madison is considered the father of our Constitution because, well, he basically wrote it. Like Jefferson before him, he was a Democratic Republican, which means he was opposed to an overly powerful centralized government. Instead, he favored a limited government with power in the hands of the common people. Madison was an intellectual. Today, many of us would probably consider him a geek. He was brilliant, but was a poor speaker and had a weak voice. He was pretty shy and small in stature. You get the idea, not someone who commanded respect in the same way Washington did. But again, he was a brilliant intellectual and was foundational to setting up our American Republic. Probably the most significant event that took place during the Madison administration was the War of 1812. The War of 1812 was fought between the United States and Great Britain between 1812 and 1815. It was fought over a number of complex issues, including British impressment of American sailors, British support for Native American raids against Americans, trade restrictions, and disputed territory. Whoa, wait a second. What is impressment, you may ask? It's basically stealing sailors and forcing them to fight for you instead of their native country. See, during this time, Great Britain had been kidnapping American sailors and forcing them to fight in the Royal Navy. Major fighting took place at sea on the Atlantic Ocean, along the American-Canadian border, along the Gulf of Mexico, and in the Mid-Atlantic region. The most dramatic moment of the War of 1812 occurred when British troops invaded Washington, D.C. and burned down the White House. The shelling of Fort McHenry was also an important event in the War of 1812, because it was during this battle that Francis Scott Key penned the American National Anthem. Over the course of the war, both the Americans and the British won important battles. With both sides war-weary and neither making much progress, the Treaty of Ghent was signed on December 24, 1814. The Treaty of Ghent ended the War of 1812 and restored boundaries to their pre-war status. The War of 1812 basically ended as a draw, with neither side getting much out of it. And that's the War of 1812 in a nutshell. So what is the Monroe Doctrine? Let's talk about it. Remember that after the New World was discovered by Columbus in 1492, many European powers tried to gobble up pieces for themselves. Spain, France, Great Britain, Portugal, and the Netherlands were some of the main players. They all wanted to settle various portions of the New World and build colonies there. When the American nation came into being, Americans were concerned over European interference in North American affairs. After Madison, James Monroe became our fifth president. He decided it was time to put a stop to European intrusion in the Americas. Enough was enough. So while delivering his annual address to Congress, Monroe set forth the policy that has come to be called the Monroe Doctrine. Basically, it stated that European powers were forbidden to colonize in North and South America. Any interference in the New World would be considered an act of aggression and would result in American intervention. That's basically code for stay the heck out of the new world or we'll go to war with you. The Monroe Doctrine was a pretty gutsy declaration. Over the years, numerous presidents have invoked the Monroe Doctrine. It was invoked during the Spanish-American War and John F. Kennedy invoked the doctrine during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Today, the Monroe Doctrine still stands as a critical component of American foreign policy. Okay, so we're good to go on James Madison, right? He was super smart, but kind of a geeky guy. He was our fourth president. He was a Democratic Republican and is considered the father of the U.S. Constitution. Let's review the key terms in this lesson. Virginia Dynasty refers to the fact that four of the first five presidents were from Virginia. Pretty simple, right? The War of 1812 was fought between the United States and Great Britain between 1812 and 1815. It was fought over a number of reasons, one of which was impressment, which is basically the stealing of foreign sailors and forcing them to fight for another state. 
The shelling of Fort McHenry was an important moment in the War of 1812 because it provided the inspiration for Francis Scott Key's national anthem. The Treaty of Ghent ended the war. Basically, it left the borders in their pre-war status. The war is generally considered a draw. The Monroe Doctrine stated that European powers were forbidden to colonize in North and South America. It was basically the U.S. telling Europe to stay away from the New World or war could result. 